Drug addiction knows no gender, race, or economic status. It is a growing problem that affects the user and also their family, friends, and community. The Cleveland County Drug Court enlists a team of judges, attorneys, behavioral health professionals, psychiatrists, alcohol and drug counselors, case managers, and parole officers to help participants become independent from addiction. Um, I started, well, it started out um, in the beginning just with like maybe some no driver license tickets and stuff like that. Um, I started drinking and partying and using drugs and um, of course with that, that comes along with the lifestyle as a bunch of criminal activities. So I kind of ended up in a really bad place in my life. And so I was going in and out of jail, catching new charges after new charges. And yeah, finally they just offered me drug court. My ex-wife was talking about moving to Phoenix and I taking my two younger kids and I really kind of thought my life was over at that point and because I was going to be alone for the first time in my life, literally alone. And when all that happened, I ended up out on the street living in my car and started associating with the people that from my past that I really didn't need to be and started using cocaine again. We see every type of person in, dr in drug court. Um, drug court is really just a cross-section of our society. Um, addiction afflicts everybody from rich to poor, black, white, brown. It doesn't matter. It doesn't discriminate. You don't really get into a drug court uh, unless you're really near to having one foot in, in prison. And the purpose of drug court obviously is to uh, reunite these people into the community before they go to prison, save the state of Oklahoma substantial tax dollars, and get these individuals back with a driver's license, get them their GED, get them employed, uh, get them back with their family and their kids. Uh, you're going to have every opportunity to succeed in this program, but you got to put the work in, and you will be judged on your actions, not your intentions, not your words. All right, so start showing us, start showing yourself that you can do this. And we want, we want it for you, we really do. We do not have a magic wand in this program though. We can't just, because you're in here, we can't just cure you like that. It's gotta be the effort that you put in. I gave it an honest try for the first two, three weeks. I stayed sober, passed all my drug tests and I started using again. I was pretty much at the end of my rope and they weren't gonna give me any more slack. And they were starting to make an example out of me. And rightfully so, because I wasn't doing the three things that Judge Tupper always asks. Show up, try, and be honest. If you can do those three things, they can work with you. I've, I've heard a, a joke that this is called drug court, not sober court. So we expect bumps in the road, we expect problems, and as long as they will work with us, we love working with them. AWOL is basically when you say, I'm not doing anything, and you stop calling in for your curfew, you stop doing drug tests, you stop coming to court, you just basically run away and try to forget it all. That's AWOL, and that's what I did. You know, he probably just got scared, and this program program can be very overwhelming at first uh, to some of these participants. And um, I think he got scared. And as a probation officer, I always try to reach out uh, to these folks and tell them there's nothing that we can't overcome. It's probably a lot worse in your mind than what it actually is. I was back hanging out with my old friends again, doing the same old thing that I was doing before I played in the drug court. So, I mean, rehab was not anywhere on my mind, you know, so. And I think, when, like I said, when I went to jail, I was so nervous to even face Judge Tupper or my counselor or my probation officer or anybody. I was just like, oh my God, I know they're gonna terminate me. And I, re I wrote this huge letter to Judge Tupper 
the day that they arrested me and just basically just begging him, you know, to have some sympathy on me. Drug court is a highly supervised uh, therapeutic treatment court designed to assist criminal offenders in obtaining uh, sobriety and stability in their lives. The offender has to, one, admit to having a substance abuse addiction, and they have to agree to come into the program. They sign a performance contract, which basically binds them to the drug court program. It spells out their responsibilities uh, in the program, and um, it's a contract between the team and the offender uh, where the team agrees to treat them and offer them counseling services, supervision services. Uh, it's one of the geniuses of drug court. It's made up of the judge, uh, prosecutor, defense attorney, uh, treatment counselors, probation officers, sheriff's department representative, uh, representative from the Norman Police Department, and uh, Office of Veterans Affairs. And what we do is uh, we sit and we discuss all the good and bad and the ugly of what's gone on with our, with our uh, participants during that week. Um, unfortunately, sometimes um, somebody's provided a, a urinalysis sample that tested positive for an illegal substance. So using that as an example, we, we have to come up with a fair sanction for that offense. If it's the first time, we may, we may do less. We may give that person community service, but if this is something that's repeated, then they may actually be sanctioned to jail. I want to commend you on the uh, way you handle the relapse. I'm disappointed in the relapse. I hope you're disappointed as well. This is the second one recently. Going into drug court sure beats the heck out of going to prison. They start the program thinking, okay, how am I gonna work this program? How am I gonna continue to do the drugs I wanna do? How am I gonna beat this program? They see they can't, they get realistic about things. They start taking their treatment seriously. Uh, they start learning the tools they need to uh, avoid the triggers that might make them want to use again. And then they start a nice upward uh, climb to success. In drug court, uh, it's all about accountability. Um, we really uh, micromanage uh, our participants, especially at the outset. Um, they've got nightly curfews, they have uh, call-ins, they've got regular random drug testing each week, they've got uh, counseling sessions each week, they have self-help meetings each week, they have court appearances each week. Uh, that's different than your traditional um, probationer. He gives everybody the benefit of the doubt and he wants everybody to succeed. I mean this drug courts in this position to help people not hurt people. They're not in the business to put people in jail. They're giving us the opportunity to turn our lives around to become productive citizens here in Oklahoma and make a difference. Well, drug court's designed to be uh, completed in 18 months. It's a five-phase program, and it's individual for each participant, but once we start seeing progress, uh, starting with sobriety and compliance with all of the other obligations uh, in their uh, performance contract, they will phase up. Not at one time did anyone say this would be an easy process, but in the end, all the hard work we put in will be worth it. So I humbly ask, with all this being said, to phase up from phase three to phase four in Cleveland County Drug Court Program. So Tracy, we are proud of you today. Your petition is granted. Uh, we have your phase up certificate here. When you hit phase three is uh, whenever you really start to see your load kind of line up. You go to court every other week and you see your counselor every other week, you know, you still have to go to your three self-help meetings uh, every week, so. I mean, it's still fairly busy, but I mean, it starts to give you a little bit of rope, you know, so where you can go out a little bit more and be on your own. So, um, yeah, now that I'm in phase five, it's like I, I really have like this 
it was like a big transition for me because I had all this time. I have all this time on my hands now, you know? I mean, I can work full time, of course, and just have all the, I mean, I'm kind of basically living a normal free life at this point. I think the sky's the limit for Dion. Uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Uh, we are pulling for him. We're uh, rooting for him. Uh, we're gonna hold him accountable, uh, but he's got all the tools he needs to be successful in this program. I look forward to his graduation. He's got some more work to do, but I look forward to that graduation. I look forward to dismissing the charges that uh, he pled into this program. Uh, that's our end of the bargain, and uh, so only time will tell. It's a very intensive program. It there's blood, sweat, and tears that are shed through this program. Um, I don't think that a lot of people really understand how much the participant puts into this. And um, by the time they reach that final goal of graduation, and they're reading their petition, petition to graduate with their family sitting behind them, all these people are there. Sometimes it's more than the participant can bear and they break down sometimes. And it's not that they're upset, they're happy. And so I think that all those things are hitting these participants at all at once, like I'm really graduating this program. And it's, it's awe inspiring. I mean, it, it is for me, it's motivating for me to keep doing my job. Drug court is um, the, in my view, it is the best evidence-based program uh, that I'm involved with. Um, it allows me to get to know these uh, participants. You get to know them on a first name basis. Um, they're no longer just a case file or a case number, but you really get to know them as people, as good people who are suffering from an addiction. Uh, the thing I like best is, is working with them and seeing the transformation as time goes by. You gradually see them uh, peel back the layers, so to speak. They, they put down the resistance, the deception, the manipulation, all the things that got them into the program, and you get to see them evolve and, and gain sobriety. You see them change physically, emotionally, and it's just a thrill from my side of the bench to, to see them go through that transformation. Um, I've gained a new understanding about my addiction and that I have to take it on a day-by-day -day basis. I can't look a week down the road. I can't look a month down the road. Because if I do, I start losing sight of what's important. And I gotta think about the here and now, what I have to do today to stay sober for today. If you can make it through drug court, you can make it through anything because this is, it's not a game it's, or anything like that. Just the heart, time that I went through, it all paid off for something, you know, and, but I know then that's when the real work is going to come in at because I will no longer have them there, you know, but I'm looking forward to it and I'm, I'm ready for my next journey, you know, I'm ready to spread my wings now, you know. Joining us now is Melissa French. She is an assistant public defender for Oklahoma County and handles all specialty courts, including drug court. And Kat Burton, assistant district attorney for Oklahoma County, where she supervises various programs, including drug court. Are drug courts the same in each county? Well, there's a set standard mm -hmm. um, operating, but I think each drug court, they adapt those principles just the way they want to, except statutorily, it's a minimum of 18 months and a maximum of three years, so you have to graduate within three years of starting the program. We met some participants just now in the video. What makes a good candidate for drug court? Somebody with criminal problem. They're gonna have to have felonies pending against them, and they gotta be sick and tired of being sick and tired. So they have to be ready. Yeah, they really do have to be ready. We also have to look at, see who is um, a high risk offender. They have a high need. We try not to put in people who are low risk offenders or have lower needs. We try to focus our, our resources on those who have a high need. Typically, how does a person get into drug court? 
There is one application made um, in Oklahoma County. It's generally made by a defense lawyer. We have one application that covers all specialty courts. And then we have an assessment that is done that helps us direct to the right court. And once someone gets in the program, what outcomes then are measured? Well, one of the things that are measured is getting a GED or a high school diploma by the end. Um, if you didn't have your children and you're trying to get your children by the end, um, it's having a job by the time you graduate. And there's a fourth one. It's, it's focusing on the high risk offenders. Are there benchmarks so they can track progress and know that they're making the proper progress? As you saw in the video, they talked about phasing up, mm -hmm. um, and those are the benchmarks. So every single phase has minimums based upon what your court has set the minimums for, and then they obviously petition the court saying they've met these minimums and are requesting the court to move to a next phase. And as they phase through the program, those are the different benchmarks. Are there people that don't want to go into drug court? I would say a lot of people that don't want to go into drug court because they're only thinking about, I got to get out of court right now because I've got to go get high because I don't want to get sick or um, I don't want to deal with trying to get off the drugs. And they think they also um, think they can kick it themselves. And until somebody slaps them in the face with, they want you to go to prison for five or 10 or 15 years and you have to make a decision, that's usually the wake up call. For me, as the defense lawyer, I've always found that it's hard. Drug court is very, very hard. And whenever I was on a regular felony docket, I would say, do you want to be, make it easy and go to prison? Or do you want to make it hard and go to drug court and try to do something different? And there's a lot of people who are just too scared. So there is a challenge facing them, whether they want to pursue it and follow through. Absolutely. I, I will tell everybody that recovery is one of the hardest things you will ever do in your life. And drug court is very, very hard. Why do communities want to have drug courts? Well, I think that we want, we, we don't want to be victims of crimes. And um, obviously the people who are in drug court are people who commit crimes against us on a daily basis. So, and we, we are members of families as well. And there are very few families that don't have addiction in their own families. And we also want to save the state of Oklahoma money and drug courts and treatment courts save Oklahoma money. You mentioned treatment courts. What are some other diversionary courts that are available in Oklahoma? Um, well, we have drug court and we encompass DUI court in that. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Prater also allowed us to include some domestic violence issues that were related to drug and alcohol use within that program. Um, we also have Remerge, which is for women who have small children who are pregnant, female diversion, <laughs> mental health court, and then CATS program. We have a veterans diversion program we started about five years ago that um, is, I think to this day, the only one of its kind in the nation where we truly do um, divert veterans from jail and prison and and try to, as I say, learn to live life on life's terms since or because of their service and help them to not come back and be repeat clients or repeat offenders for the state of Oklahoma or for the county. All right, Melissa French, Kat Burton, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.